Kuzampo, you're watching Bhutan This Week with Kezo Wangma. Our top stories this week. <music> Their Majesty the King and the Gelson join world leaders in London for state funeral of Queen Elizabeth II. <music> TCB launches new brand to believe to promote the country. Upon the invitation of King Charles III of the United Kingdom, his Majesty the King and Her Majesty the Gelson joined leaders from around the world in London for the state funeral of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II on Monday. An unprecedented number of people around the world watched the funeral services for the late Queen on television and online, held this morning at Westminster Abbey. Yesterday, their majesties attended the king's reception for guests at the state funeral. Here, their majesties are arriving at the reception with Emperor Naruhito of Japan, King Willem Alexander, Queen Maxima and Princess Beatrice of the Netherlands, and Grand Duke Henry and Grand Duchess Maria Theresa of Luxembourg. Later in the evening yesterday, their majesties visited Westminster Hall to pay respects to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Their Majesties offered prayers for the late Queen at the Lying in State, where thousands of people paid their respects before the state funeral today. Pupkim, BBS News. Tour operators, guides and other stakeholders in the tourism sector are looking forward to reviving the businesses as the government decides to do away with RT-PCR test requirements for incoming travellers. The government announced the relaxation of COVID restriction on Monday evening, stating that the end of the pandemic is in sight with high vaccination coverage and as the severity of the virus wanes. Inbound travellers can enter the country without testing for COVID-19 from Friday when Bhutan reopens its international borders. However, all individuals above the age of 12 entering Bhutan may have to take random RT-PCR tests at entry points as part of COVID-19 surveillance for new variants. This has come as good news for some stakeholders such as tour operators, Handicrafts Association and the Guides Association of Bhutan. According to them, this will make things convenient, which will attract more visitors. Since we are opening, and it, in a, no, it also provides actually, uh, you know, opportunities to to guides because, you know, then if if there is no COVID protocol, it you know we also feel that it's much, we feel that, you know, it's safer also, you know, that, you know there won't be much of the restriction otherwise. And uh, prior to that, when we had uh, five days quarantine, and then before that, when we had 14 days quarantine, even when on the tour, there, there were a lot of restrictions, and it was very difficult to uh, disseminate information. The news release from the Prime Minister's office said the COVID situation in the country is under control, and that evidence so far suggests it is safe to consider the relaxations. The employers of foreign workers and day workers have to ensure that their employees are fully vaccinated. The news release says unvaccinated individuals can get vaccines from the health ministry upon paying some amount. Anyone who received two doses of any COVID-19 vaccines is considered fully vaccinated, except for Johnson & Johnson, for which a single dose is considered as fully vaccinated. Individuals testing positive will have to isolate for five days without having to test at the end of the isolation period. The government is also discontinuing the escort services currently provided to travellers in the border areas. And the use of face masks is now recommended only for individuals with flu-like symptoms and people with underlying health conditions. For Pugem, this is Sunampem for BBS News.
The European Union has granted 15 million euros to the Agriculture Ministry. The fund will be used to implement a program to promote inclusive, sustainable and resilient agricultural food systems in the country. The project is a part of the EU's commitment to provide 31 million euro for a program which covers three prioritized areas of climate change, good governance and digital transition. It's in, in a budgetary form of support and uh, so uh, we have all the flexibility to actually prioritize the needs of the, the country and then uh, implement uh, with, uh, with the support of this project. Uh, so we will be focusing mainly on quality uh, production of the resources, food resources, from agriculture, from livestock, from forestry uh, sector. And then adding value to this uh, for uh, you know, uh, better quality, improving the quality of the, the food resources, storage, and then for the market facilitation. As European Union Bhutan Trade Support Project comes to an end this year, the EU ambassador to Bhutan and India reaffirmed that the Union will continue to work with Bhutan in other areas. The EU Bhutan Trade Support Project was implemented four years ago to diversify exports by improving national trade and investment regulatory framework. It has helped Bhutanese firms export more than 2,000 units of their products to markets in Europe, Asia and the U.S. Bio Bhutan is a popular local brand in Bhutan. When it started in 2005, the company just produced lemongrass essential oil. Ugin, who owns the company, says small and medium enterprises like Bio Bhutan still has a lesser visibility in the international market. However, through the EU Bhutan Trade Support Project, he says his company has strengthened the trading system. Yeah, we are a very small com small company, and we are in terms of quantity we produce very small quantity. So we bulk of our raw, our uh, products are actually uh, our customers, for example, are actually tourists, and then we actually target the niche market, export market. But their requirements, especially the regulatory requirements like certifications, is very important. And without having the certificate. Uh, it's not enough to say that our products are grown in the, you know, are manufactured in Bhutan, grown in the piston environment, but that does not really guarantee a market. They actually need to have the certificate. So now with this project, we have created this condition. Under the project, today, 1,400 artisans, farmers, and small and medium-sized enterprises in the horticulture and textile and handicraft sectors are linked to 11 export markets. He has uh, given uh, me the opportunity to uh, think about the uh, think and work on the export management and export of the product and the quality and the taste of the uh, market. So I think it was very uh, good for good opportunity for me and to, uh, to all all other uh, beneficiaries. At this small enterprises. They never knew about the product development, also packaging also, you know, and then really attracting the international market. More basically, uh, what we learned was like on this food safety habits and then the certification. The different countries has different certification norms, you know. So this training from the ITCs, now they are well versed about the certification system, how to pack, how to send to the other countries. This project, like uh, when we attended this trade phase and all, like we just went with whatever we had in our hands, like... Uh, uh, we just took whatever is available in the market, like we went and attended the trade phase and all, without having all the knowledge on export management and then process and, and procedures. But now after, uh, from this project, like we have been like thoroughly trained on like how to handle export management. As per the International Trade Center, which is one of the major implementing bodies, the project has helped in ensuring compliance with export standards and efficiencies in cross-border procedures, which are key constraints in market access, especially for small and medium enterprises. Samtan Dolker, BBS News. As the country opens its doors to guests once again, the Tourism Council of Bhutan launched and adopted a new brand to promote the country. The new brand Bhutan, with the tagline Belief, was unveiled by the Prime Minister on Thursday. The new brand will replace the old brand Bhutan Happiness is a Place. The new tagline, Believe, reflects the determined focus on the future. 
The Prime Minister said the new brand will ensure that the communities and streets are clean and safe, the environment protected and cherished, and that Bhutan has everything it needs in place. Lots of excitement. We are opening our border gates at a time when the whole world is looking for something to believe in. The pandemic has questions, uh, questioned our priorities and even our ways of life. Our offers are unique and distinctly relevant at this time of the human existence. If you are looking for a higher purpose, if you want a spiritual experience, if you place values above everything, then I'm sure one will believe in us. The TCB also launched a new tourist visa or permit online system. With the new system, visitors can apply online for visa themselves by completing the application form. But they can also apply through a tour operator. And unlike in the past, the visa will allow visitors to remain in the country for up to 90 days from the date of entry. Bima Saldan Singh, BBS News. Medical malpractice is described as a situation in which patients are harmed or injured due to poor medical treatment or wrong diagnosis by healthcare providers. However, one of the ways to overcome such negligence is by enhancing their clinical competencies through simulation-based training programs. And to realize this, a center for simulation-based training has been opened at the Kesar Gilpo University of Medical Sciences of Bhutan in the capital. The training center was inaugurated on 17th September. The center will strive to provide state-of-the-art facility that encourages health professionals to achieve a high level of competencies. Although the Bhutanese health sector established the National Emergency Education Center at the National Referral Hospital in 2012, it did not make the desired progress so far, and the reasons are attributed to lack of a dedicated center to conduct simulation-based training. To facilitate the center to achieve its missions, the Kijums and the Jaika Bhutan office are implementing a five-year technical cooperation project which was launched in August 2020. The component, uh, we have uh, expert dispatch and equipment provision and the training. A center for um, simulation-based training. We provided uh, simulation uh, training equipment uh, such as uh, a mannequin, uh, uh, with using that, uh, that the clinic service provider can learn about how to deal with the patient. The project will also train the health professionals across the country in managing emergency situations and resuscitation, thereby improving patient safety and quality medical care. We have conducted uh, TOT, what is called training of the trainers, uh, training conducted by Jiva Raksha on basic life support, basic care life support, uh, and uh, emergency care life support. This was uh, actually been conducted to train our Bhutanese instructors by the Indian instructors coming through Jiva Raksha. And the main aim is to strengthen our emergency care life support within the, within the country. As part of the ongoing training of the trainers, about 60 nurses and 50 doctors are undergoing immersive simulation training. They have been trained by 25 Bhutanese specialists and 28 senior nurses. The center endeavors to become an emergency hospital to support the National Referral Hospital in times of national crisis. For Karmawandi, this is Pemal Hadin, BBS News. The Royal Audit Authority is recommending the service providers like the Health Ministry, Police, RST and Department of Roads to come up with a single national helpline number to provide effective emergency services to the public. The RAA has underscored this in its report on performance audit on safe and sustainable road transport system, which was published this summer. 
The report reasons that currently there are different toll-free numbers which only confuse people who land up calling the wrong helpline to seek emergency services. For instance, if a person is badly injured in a car accident, the first and foremost thing to do is to call up an ambulance hotline number. But not many people remember the helpline. Then, to inform the police about the accident, one must dial a different toll-free number. Likewise, there are many other emergency helpline numbers such as 113 to seek assistance from the police, 110 for fire brigade, 1250 for electricity services, and 1255 for financial services. According to the service receivers, all these multiple emergency helpline numbers hinder them in receiving prompt services. For example, when there's an accident, there are so many numbers that a person can call. 112 for ambulance, 113 for police, and there's also another toll-free number for traffic. But during such emergency, we don't remember these numbers. If there's one uniform number for different services, then we can remember and dial the numbers immediately and explain things. There are so many numbers for traffic and ambulances and so on like 113 and 112. When there are too many numbers to call, we don't really remember the number on the spot. In foreign countries, there is one number like 911. Likewise, if there is a single emergency number in Bhutan, it will be of an immense help to us. In times of emergency, it would be convenient to have just one toll-free number because it's too hard to remember several numbers. The report further says Bhutan is one of the many countries in the world where people need to call different numbers for emergency services. This delays services to the public in times of emergency. Heeding the recommendation, the Health Ministry, Police, RSTA and Roads Department under the Works and Human Settlement met last month to adopt an action plan. They agreed to draft an SOP to coordinate and direct any emergency call from the public to the relevant agencies. Something Dolker, BBS News. If you want to build a house but don't want the hassles that come along with it, the Works and Human Settlement Ministry has come up with a solution. People can now opt to construct buildings through the certified builders, which are companies that have been certified by the government to carry out the construction of private buildings. At the launch of the system of certified builders, the ministry certified the first three registered builders on Wednesday. From designing a house to finding construction workers and monitoring the works, a house owner has to manage it all, but not anymore. Although optional for now, they can use certified builders to undertake the construction. You basically have to be the contractor for the construction of your own house. So henceforth, going forward uh, with the certified builders, because they have the adequate manpower and the appropriate manpower, engineering professionals, uh, plumbers, uh, certified plumbers, certified uh, electricians, etc. All of the work that you are doing currently, that you are doing when you are constructing now, that will be done by taking over by the certified builders. And to encourage potential house owners to use them, certified builders raised the need for policy intervention. I'm also hoping that the Ministry and CDB will come up with certain policies uh, which will help uh, facilitate the certified builder system so that the people will trust us rather than the old uh, Takeda system. Uh, if the uh, authorities could uh, introduce certain policies that uh, the constructions are to be done by, executed by or uh, to be completed under the supervision of engineers or certified builders. Till now we can see that all the works, all the private buildings are built uh, through Thikadars. And Thikadars what they do is they just come, they see the uh, drawing, they fix the rate and they start working directly. There's no safety measures, there's no proper testing and all. But with certified builders there are technically sound people who knows what are the things to be done before you start the project. 
Henceforth, the ministry says it will strictly enforce the technical requirements in the Bhutan building regulations such as close supervision of construction by certified engineers, certified plumbers and electricians to motivate house owners to use certified builders. This initiative is expected to help professionalize the overall construction sector which currently is lacking in the country. Today, there are around 2,700 contractors in the country. Samtan Dolker, BBS News. With more than 20 different public, corporate and private offices, Nganglam Town in Pemagatil is seeing a growing number of people, especially the office goers. However, the town does not have any recreational facility for the residents to unwind after a tiresome day or a week. Therefore, the recent Zongha Tsokdu decided to allow the opening of karaoke clubs in the town. The DT's decision partly revokes its 2016 resolution which disallowed the establishment of dryings and any other entertainment centers in the district. This means the house has endorsed setting up of karaoke clubs in Nganglam as well as in the upcoming Denchi town of Pemagasal with immediate effect. Opening of the dryings is still restricted. According to Nganglam Dunkak administration, having entertainment centers is essential for stress management and healthy lifestyles. There are many interested people to establish karaoke clubs. So for that, they must seek clearance from Zonkak, Dunkak and Tromde. I also want to request the House to kindly decide to provide approval to the interested individuals. Local leaders supported the Nganglam Dungpa's submission. There will be lots of people coming here to halt night and enjoy. So I would like to request all the members present here to consider providing approval to individuals who want to open karaoke clubs in Nganglam. From the Zonkak Tsogdu, providing approval is guaranteed, so other relevant agencies will decide whether to provide license or not. After much deliberation, the House passed the resolution to allow residents in Nganglam town to operate karaoke clubs. The decision brought cheers to the business communities and residents of Nganglam and Denchi towns. Some of them who are constructing buildings are now planning to convert their underground floor into karaoke clubs. We have not been permitted to open karaoke clubs so far. Now the rules has changed. I hope to seize the opportunity as travelers commuting to Mongar, Tashigang and other districts may spend a night here knowing that there are some entertainment centers. I plan to open a karaoke in the past but I couldn't get the license. Since we don't have any entertainment facility, opening of karaoke clubs will offer respite to those who had hectic working hours. It will also benefit the businessmen like us. With more than 10,000 population in Nganglam, the business community there is optimistic of making karaoke clubs a lucrative business. Currently, the district has five interested individuals to set up karaoke studios in Nganglam town. They have to seek administrative approval from the Dunkak administration and social clearance from the neighbors. After that, they can submit their duly filled applications to the Bigma, which will accordingly review the applications and grant approval. For Tinle Doji in Pemagatsil, this is Pemal Hadin, BBS News. Guarding crops against wild animals have become a daily routine for many farmers, but not in Kamegyok and Gasa. The farmers of Damji and Jabisa Jokes have been saved from this hardship thanks to the portable electric fences which it received from the government in April this year. People in Damji and Jabisa Jokes depend on paddy for a living. And thanks to the portable electric fences, not a single scarecrow is being used in the fields. The crops are almost ready for harvest and the farmers haven't had to spend a single sleepless night this year. 
Some of the households installed electric fences in 2016, but they said they have not been as effective compared to the portable ones. For the portable electric fencing, poly wires were used for the fencing. Poly wire is made of plastic and embedded thin metal wires used to carry electrical current from an energizer. The wires are fixed on the poles using nuts and bolts. The National Plant Protection Center, with financial support from Bhutan for Life Project and in collaboration with the district administration, installed the 5 km long fence. The previous electric fences benefited us, but with this new portable electric fencing, it is portable and the poles can last longer. Moreover, the electric current is powerful. Earlier, wild animals such as bears, deer, wild boars and monkeys used to attack our crops. We installed electric fences but to no avail. But now, after installing it, they cannot enter our fields. This portable electric fencing looks far better than the previous one. I saw a cow trying to enter the field last time, but could not get inside due to the electric current. Earlier, we had to put scarecrows in the fields and had to guard the crops every night. For now, it is a pilot project. According to the Georg officials, if the project turns out to be a success, they will prioritize it for the Georg in the next five-year plan. For Chang Adoji in Gasa, Sunam Pem for BBS News. And this is all we have for you this week. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.